set up for this, but uh, whatever, you know what's up, look forward to the real shit coming soon. Bleach video should be out by the end of January 2022. January 2022. January 2022. Whoops. So yeah, obviously the Bleach video, uh, it, it, hey, it's not out yet. I did want to have it out really badly by the time February hit because as of around this time, it's been my one year anniversary here on YouTube. Woohoo! Almost 500 subs, we're getting there, but at any rate, full transparency, the video is just taking a really long time because it's turned into a two hour feature length movie by this point. If you know anything about editing, you can probably look at this timeline here and go, oh, maybe that's why it's taking so long. Is he stupid? Why is it that much? Yeah, I don't know. Who cares? Bleach coming soon, but until then, manga. Starting off with something I've been waiting a little bit for, Record of Ragnarok. So around, I want to say this time last year, I started seeing scans of this pop up online and I was like, whoa, hold up, look at that art. Why are all these gods sexy? But then also seeing the action and the combat and hearing that it had a really cool premise, I was already ready to jump on it. Then Viz swoops in and says, hey, we got physicals coming later in 2022 to just wait on it. So I waited on it. I'm going to grab a couple more as they come out. And once I have like four or five, I'm going to get in there finally. Hell's Paradise number 12. Hell's Paradise, I I'm just a little bit longer. I think it's going to be, I think it's just 14 volumes, so I should have all of it before too long. I'm so, so excited to finally read this one. Anime is coming later this year, and I thought about waiting for that and watching some of it, then picking the manga up from there. But I don't know, this art style is amazing. It's a really short read. Probably going to just go hard on it as soon as that last volume comes in. Oh, also, Ayashimon going in Weekly Jump right now by the same artist. Hey, people seem to really like it. I'm going to wait more on it until there's more chapters, but hell yeah, I'm glad it seems to be just as cool as Hell's Paradise. Okay, the second volume of the case study of Vanitas. I actually debated on even including this because I have volumes 4, 5, 6, and 7, and 8 of this already. The reason I decided to put it in when I bought it was because it gives me an excuse to talk about Pandora Hearts, which I'm currently reading. Pandora Hearts rules! Holy shit! I think it may be in my top 10, if not top 5 now. I'm not finished yet, I'm about halfway in there, but oh my god, I absolutely love everything about it so far. And coming off of watching Vanitas first and then going to Pandora Hearts, I'm already excited to get back to Vanitas' manga. The Bleach video is coming next obviously, but after that, I don't know, you, you may see a Pandora Hearts video here soon because, ooh, I'm super excited to get into Mashal eventually. I, I think I'm going to wait for it to completely finish because I think the author himself said he doesn't plan on the series being too long, so that's perfect. This looks amazing, it looks hilarious, but yeah, once it's finally close to done or there's an ending in sight, I can't, I'm excited for this, it looks great. Not too much to say about everybody's getting married just yet. It's about a girl whose one big aspiration in life is to be a stay-at-home housewife, but her boyfriend is like, nah, I got shit to do and takes off because he ain't trying to get married. So she meets a new guy, falls in with him, starts dating yada yada, and he's like, I have no interest in ever getting married, no goodbye. And that's all I really know about it yet. My girlfriend read the first volume of it and really liked it so she ordered the rest of the series. So basically, check back in next month and I'll have more to say about it probably. Saw someone on Twitter talk about Succubus and Hitman and thought, hey, that art looks pretty cool and the premise seems pretty interesting, so sure, I'll grab it. It's about a high schooler who is dead, but his body is inhabited now by a soul and a succubus and they go on assassination missions together. I don't know too much about it other than it's very bloody and the art's really cool. Who knows, maybe a little spicy too, we'll see. The final volume of Sweat and Soap, the conclusion of this smelly saga. <laughs> Um, I haven't actually checked the series out since the early volumes, I was waiting to just get all of it at once because I heard it was only going to be 11 volumes, so I thought, ah, fuck it, once I have it all, I'll finally read it. Looking at the cover, I can, uh, kind of guess what the series is going to go, though. <laughs> Next volume of Undead Unluck. So, this is another one kind of like Masha where I'm just waiting on it to get closer to ending before I really get into it. Fans online I've seen of it really do enjoy it, but not a whole lot of people talk about it, so kind of just coasting on it. I may pause on buying it here at Volume 5 and wait until it ends and see what the general reception is, but I like what it was putting down so far, so yeah, we'll, we'll see. 
volume three out of four of number five, which is a weird sentence to say. I'll, I really love Taiyo Matsumoto. His art style is so, so good. I talked more about this in my big ass manga collection video. You, you, can, you can go watch that if you want to know more about it. But volume four, I believe should be the last one. And oh my God, I'm so excited. Read number five, read and watch Ping Pong, read and watch Tech on Concrete. Taiyo Matsumoto. Ugh, I'm a dipshit. I meant to have Anali and Dewila here actually completely read before this video because it's just these three volumes, but that didn't pan out. Between the Bleach video, the Pandora Hearts reading, and just regular work, there just, there just wasn't time for it. I'm sorry, I'll try next time. I was gravitated to it at Barnes & Noble by the covers and the art, and kind of subconsciously figured out, oh, this is Witch Hat Atelier's artist, isn't it? So that, that's why this is up here too. Witch Hat's really good, I plan to read more of it as soon as I have more volumes. This is just three volumes though, so if you like Witch Hat and want something else by that artist, check this out. Seems pretty cool. Volume 5 of Wotakoi, Love is Hard for Otaku. I believe this may be the last volume now. I read the first one back when it first came out and absolutely loved it. It's just really sweet and I love all four of the main characters and I think there may be more characters as the series gone on. It's just love in an office among otaku. It's a very simple concept, but I like the characters and where I work in an office, I can relate to it a little bit. I like it a lot. Volume 16 of Beastars. So last time I talked about the series was in my big manga collection video, and I feel like I was a little harsh to it. I was reading it monthly and was personally really let down by the ending, but as time's gone on a little bit, I've really mellowed out over it. I really love Beastars at the end of the day. I'm gonna keep buying the volumes, even though I've been having this conversation with my girlfriend. I personally think the best way to read Beastars may be online scans. I know some people are gonna be like, what? You don't wanna just support the physical volumes? And I mean, I got the whole shelf over here. Obviously I am. Viz and their usual self didn't bother with the color pages at all for Beastars, and Itagaki is putting out a color page for this series like almost every other chapter. Really, if you've read Beastars, go check those color pages out. They're amazing, and I feel like the Viz volumes not really including those in any way is a fucking shame. I'm saving Blue Giant for myself. I read, I think, the first two chapters when I got that first volume of way back whenever it came out, and I was like, oh yeah, this right here is what I want. Buying every volume until it's all done, then I'm reading it in like three sittings. Following a boy discovering his love of music and jazz, this is great. If you're into Beck, you know, the story of Mongolian Chop Squad, I really do think you'll like this one too. God, these covers rule. I was able to find all of Devilman Grimoire off of eBay for a super great deal and I don't know how common they are right now. Earlier last month, I read all of Devilman for the actual first time, the full story. Oh my god, Devilman's top 5. Go, go read Devilman. Read it right now. This, oh man, Devilman coming on this channel eventually because ooh, that's the good stuff. Grimoire is a Suedo reboot sequel type, I don't think it's a sequel, I think it's more of a reboot. But it was made years later, written by the original author Go Nagai, but drawn by somebody else. And from what I could tell by flipping through it, this seems really cool, so I'm excited to check this out because oh my god, devil man. More of the Mashima goodness, baby, Eden Zero number 14. I haven't actually read Eden Zero since about volume 6 or 7 when I caught up in English. I'm just kind of waiting until there's a bunch more of it to grab because who knows, it could be like Rave Master where there's not a whole lot, or like Fairy Tale where there's like 70 something fucking volumes. But from what I read, this one might be, I don't know, I really like Rave Master. I'm a big Rave Master fan, but Eden Zero might be my favorite. I don't know, this spaceship pretty cool though. Also, Mashima's horny level is unmatched. I grabbed the Exo Drive Reincarnation Games on a Twitter recommendation. Don't know too much about it other than apparently it's in a future where Isekai is a form of entertainment and so they've made a tournament out of Isekais for television? I don't know. The art in it seems pretty cool. Someone basically said, if you like Isekai but don't get too far into it, check this out. It's kind of just a parody of Isekai. So I grabbed it. We'll see. I don't know if I'll grab more. We'll find it. The second volume of Free Aaron. So, I haven't started this one yet because I'm waiting until I get about four or five volumes. 
but I believe the plot is about a group of adventurers so many years after their big adventure of saving the world has ended, and now everyone's getting a little older and the party's starting to, you know, drift apart and age, minus the main character who is an elf whose aging is way different than the rest of her party, so as she stays young and everyone else grows old, she has to kind of come to terms with that and this life that she now has nothing going on in. I don't know too much about it other than hearing that premise online, but that was enough to make me get these volumes and everyone that talks about it absolutely loves it, so I'm really excited for this. The next volume of the Gantz Omnibuses. So, I'm not the biggest fan of the Dark Horse Omnibuses, honestly. I think they're a little small and chunky and bend a little shitty. But when it comes to Gantz, I think the translation and the quality of the scans online are much worse than having to buy these kind of shitty Omnibuses. So whatever, I'll just take it as it is. But the series itself, it... Oku just wrote some straight up trash that's fun to read. Like, the art's amazing, the story... Story's got loads of issues, but I don't care. It's edgy for edgy's sake, but whatever. Fucking look at the art. Shut up. It's fine. So I haven't got to read this yet, but Other Side Picnic really seems interesting. I believe it's based on a white novel about two girls who find a portal into another world and end up dealing with weird other world shit. You know, regular, typical Japanese light novel stuff, yada yada. The thing that really interests me after looking it up was apparently it's based on Roadside Picnic, the book that Stalker is based Get on. Out of here, Stalker. I fucking love Stalker and have been meaning to read Roadside Picnic for a long time. There's a lot to read if you can't fucking tell. But I really, really love Stalker and seeing that this maybe based on that well the book that inspired that franchise yeah that was enough for me to immediately walk out with that i'm excited as hell for this i'm gonna need way of the house husband to hurry up and finish so i can read all of it because reading four volumes at once when that was all that was out was killer i had it was like not another volume for uh, i want to say like almost a year when i got that fourth volume i love this story so much i just oh my god it's so fucking hilarious what if kiryu was a house husband it's great Happy Kaneko's Killer Life is about a girl named Kaneko who accidentally ends up becoming a hitman and is very good at it. The whole story is told in four panel like little comic strips that are basically straight to the point jokes. Uh, if you'll notice the animals all around it, it's because there's constant animal puns in here. It's probably not for everyone, but it is really adorable and it's in full color, which is the biggest bonus you can have. All but one of the Rosa Versailles hardback covers. So earlier this month, uh, you pro if you're on Twitter or if you're a manga collector, you probably saw it. Barnes and Noble had that half-off sale on hardbacks. Man, did I score! We'll, you, we'll get into some more of those here shortly. Rosa Versailles, I believe, is one of, if not the most formative and classic shoujo manga ever, maybe. I actually really need to get into it because I think this is fucking history right here and these volumes I got them half off so perfect. I'm missing the last one. I think the last one is actually just side stories and bonuses though so these four should be able to get me through the story. Uh, yeah, this is great. Fuck yeah for that sale. We'll talk more about that as we go. The third volume of the Kirby Manga Mania. Yo, this shit is great. Every single story is just so much fun and filled with passion and love for Kirby. I, I, I don't I don't know if y'all are into Kirby. I love Kirby, so whatever. But there's that Kirby game coming in a few months. Oh my god, that shit looks great. So if you're into those types, if you're into Kirby games, read this to get you in the mood for that because oh my god, it's amazing. As of now, it seems like there may just be three of them. They're short story collections that have been compiled together, and the artist himself is like, these are kind of all my favorite. Who knows if we'll do more? We'll see. So there may be a fourth, but as of right now, it's just these three. Get them. They rule. Jitsu Wa, My Monster Secret. So I bought all of this within a month because I was reading it online and was like, oh man, I'm really enjoying this. I'll just keep reading the scans, you know, having a good time. Then I saw it actually had a physical release here that hasn't been reprinted in a minute. Made some moves real quick and have found all but just, I think, three volumes now. It's about a guy who literally is incapable of keeping secrets and he falls in love with the quiet, mysterious girl, but he's just kind of an aloof dumbass. And one day after school, he sees that, oh no, wait, she has vampire wings. Oh wait, this bitch a vampire. And he has to keep her secret, the guy who can't keep secrets, 
or else her dad is going to force her to move to another school. It starts as a kind of funny rom-com that's got really good humor and turns into a fucking cracked out adventure like Gintama. My Monster Secret is great, a fantastic cast, and legitimately funny. I cannot recommend it enough. If you're semi into rom-coms or heavy into rom-coms, this one's for you. If you haven't ever done a rom-com, go into this one first because I think the cracked outness might help. Thanks to that Barnes & Noble sale, I was able to get these last two volumes of Helsing for half off. Fuck yeah, bud. Helsing is cool as fuck, man. I'm actually really excited to finally go through it all in these gigantic versions. So, one thing I've been wondering though is, does Helsing have color art? Like, actual color pages of the manga? Because there's none in these big boys, and I was wondering, well, did they just not include them and still charge $50? Or was Hirano dying and not able to do the color pages because if you actually read it here in the notes, oh my god, he's constantly begging for an assistant and no one ever came to assist him, the poor man. <laughs> the last one does have all of the volume covers in here in color at the end, so there is that. But I don't know, I still feel like I'm being robbed on color pages here. You, you can't fool me. Shintaro Kago's Super Dimensional Love Gun. So... This is not for everyone, I actually wouldn't recommend it to almost anyone. It's a very bizarre thing where the artist kind of enjoys drawing weird, fucked up things and brutal shit and gore, but putting it in comedic, bizarre situations, it really interested me and I grabbed to kind of see how I felt about it, but at the end of the day, it is just kind of gory for bloody gore bizarre sake, so I I really wouldn't recommend it to most people, but I mean if you if you wanted them freaks out there, hey, get in here. <laughs> Just gonna do these two together. Card Captor Sakura and Chobits. So these are also part of that Barnes and Noble hardback sale. I grabbed whatever I could. But if you remember in my manga haul video from last month, the link down below, I actually am trying to give Clamp more of a chance because my whole big thing is I don't like reading unfinished series. Half of Clamp shit is just not finished, but there are some things that are, so I'm going to try and give those a chance, and Card Captor Soccer is one of them, and I, I don't know if Showbiz is finished. Was it, it was a hardback, so I grabbed it. Whatever, we'll see. So this is actually a sketchbook by Tarada Katsuya, an artist I follow on Instagram and Twitter that I'm a real huge fan of. Not too much to really say about it other than I fucking love their art, like look look at it, look at it, oh my god. I'll link their Instagram down below, you can go check them out on there, that's where they're most active. Good stuff. Also from the Barnes & Noble hardcover sale, the first volume of Saint Young Men. Don't really know too much about Saint Young Men other than it's just Buddha and Jesus hanging out and being good old buddies, but I think that may literally just be all the series is. Buddha and Jesus chilling, being the best of friends. Oh yeah, I'll throw this in here too because whatever. I got Super Mega Saves the Troops because yeah, it's fucking hilarious. I love Super Mega, go subscribe to them, they're good boys. And lastly, I'll end with this. I got the Quintessential Quintuplets box set for like, uh, 30 bucks off of Amazon, so hell yeah. I don't actually know too much about the series other than I was planning on getting into it when it was finished, which is it finished? I don't, I think, maybe, I don't know. The fact that they may all just be coming out in these box sets, yeah, I'll just wait and grab all those and read it when it's done, fuck yeah. And hopefully I can find them for the same deal because I ain't about to drop 75 on each. Alright, yeah, that's gonna do it for January. Like I said, I swear, I, I, well, I, I, I want to swear, but let's be honest, I'm gonna try. The Bleach video should be out by the time February is over. I'm more than halfway finished with it now, like definitely three-fourths of the way in. It's getting there, folks. Bleach video coming soon, fucking subscribe, come on, it's gonna be real good. If you're curious about what the Bleach video is gonna be like, go watch the Shaman King and Trigun video. That'll kind of clue you in, I promise. It's worth the wait. See you next time, hopefully with a bleach video and not disappointment instead.